Are we live? Are we alive? I said, are alive. we alive? Oh man, I think I'm alive. I think I'm alive too. <laughs> you mean this like less oxygen up here? I don't know how you do it up here, Lexi. Like, we're up at, how, how high are we? 8,000 feet, maybe a little higher actually. I know, I went running up the hill earlier today and uh, I did, I almost died. Yeah, we, so in the but summer. But I am alive. We are alive. Running. In the summer, we do workouts up at 9,000 feet and that's where you truly build mm. character more than strength. No, you feel very strong, but it is, um, it's not glamorous training up here. It mm. takes a certain kind of like, just believing that it's going to do something for you because you can't run that fast. Yeah. So speaking of said location, we are in Mammoth Lakes and we are really excited to film a couple days with Alexi Papa. She is uh, an Olympic runner. She went to Rio in the 10K. Um, she just debuted at the Chicago Marathon, mm -hmm. which was super exciting. And she's also a filmmaker. Um, you should definitely check out Tracktown if you haven't already. Just so many things. You just read all these great things online. So I just wanted to give everyone online just like a little sneak peek of, of you know, who Alexi is. And then also, thank you to UCAN for making this happen. So, so okay. So some people wrote on my Instagram mm. some questions. Should we do some Why don't we start with that? And what's yeah. your handle on, on the Insta so people can... So people oh. can ask their questions right now. It's at Alexi Pappas, which is A-L-E-X-I, P as in potato, A-P-P-A-S, like potatoes in Spanish with an extra P. That's good. That's like my that. handle. It's just at Alexi Pappas. <laughs> so, um, Was potatoes in Spanish taken? No, in Spanish. Potatoes in Spanish. Pappas. Pappas. Oh. But there's an extra P. Anyway, so, okay. Um, I, one of the most compelling questions someone asked, well, okay, let's be practical here. People mm -hmm. want to know actually about, um, uh, how do you get faster and eat better? That's such a broad question, mm -hmm. but there are some very like practical things you can do. And I think you have to sleep like, mm -hmm. and I didn't believe it until I heard it from the right person. So mm -hmm. hopefully I'm the right person for you to hear this from. Like my dad told me growing up. Yeah. Um, but how wasn't... much could you share and just yeah. say like how much were you sleeping before where people are saying, dude, you need to sleep more? Yeah. I think I used to think eight hours was like really good and it is mm. a, that is not bad sleep, but if you sleep nine this is how my coach says it, if mm. you sleep nine hours every night over the course of seven days, it's almost like you're getting another day of another night of rest. That's pretty good. Seven more hours. Um, napping is really helpful if there's a day or two a week when you can just lay down for 20 minutes to an hour. It's it's helpful. Like sleeping, if, if you have to trade five miles a week for an extra hour of sleep, do it. That's what, that is the best advice I have for getting better, honestly. I love that. So a lot of us are probably on the overtrained, under sleep side of things. Yeah. That's good. And I might even extend for those of us who you might hear like nine hours, like that is a bridge too far, an extra fifteen minutes a night, an yes. extra thirty. You know what? Yes. And and on that note, it sounds like you're on the be kind to yourself train. Mm. And I think that's another thing that we are not great at as athletes because if if you're a runner or if you run at all, then you're probably someone who is hard on yourself. Yeah. I, I think. I think like by nature we are a determined crowd and you have to try to be kind to yourself. Too. So is that something that you have like, cause you seem on the outside and you seem very good at that and you really put out this very kind message out there. Is that come from a place of an earlier spot when you're younger where you weren't and, or has it kind of always been there? And, and I guess what I'm asking is like, where did that come from? I think, um, it comes from, I'm a very like, I'm on or I'm off person, meaning, uh, when I'm at practice, like when I'm in the middle of a hard workout, I'm very, um, determined and, and I have like, 
I want to have integrity with my workouts. That means that like when the painful moment comes, I'm like run faster, like push mm. harder in that moment. But on the flip side, when I'm done training, we're here in my house. I cannot possibly function on that level all the time. Right. And I would rather live a life of extreme like determination and commitment in those moments and then cut you know, kindness oh, yeah. in the other moment. So I think it has come out of a, a out of like, you know, it's yeah. almost like you're, I would rather have more hard on myself moments and more soft on myself moments than being like, well, I'm kind of trying hard. I'm kind of being nice to myself yeah. all the time. Does that make sense? It totally does. I mean, I can, I can say that uh, I'm in the middle sometimes, right? It just gets a little blurred in the edges. Uh, that is so great. That's such a refreshing thing to hear. Um, and, uh, hopefully that gives you that little extra pep in your step and all your training. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and to go to sleep every night knowing like we tried our best, even if your best was 90% of like crap that day, like yeah. you feel bad, just give your best of bad. Mm, you know? I like that. It's like, that's what that is. Yeah. So, Paige, do we have any any stuff happening online here? Um, yeah, someone asked, they have a hurt ankle, okay. and it still hurts a bit. How do they know, like, when to get back to running? We did that question a lot. About ankles, specifically? Yes. Um, I need you to fix him in 30 seconds. Yeah. Well, okay, the rule of thumb usually is, like, when you think you're ready to come back, whether you're sick or whether there's an injury, give it one more day. That was, mm. we were always told, like, the day that you're ready, you have one more day. Because as soon as the moment you feel good, and then the urge is to go out and hammer, and then yeah. you're like, oh, I'm not ready. Yeah. And for ankles in specific, I think doing a hop test is pretty telling. Like, are you able to hop? Like, you On one leg. Yeah. You have to be able to hop to run. So if you can hop today, then maybe you take one more day off, and then, then go for that jog. Hop test. That's so good. Um, maybe we can go back and forth, Paige. Guys, we got Paige behind. I'm so excited. We work remotely, uh, or Paige works remotely from us in San Francisco, but we're coming up to Mammoth. Paige lives up here, so super excited to have her here, and she is uh, driving this whole thing right now. Paige, what else we got? Um, I don't know how to see more comp. We're back. Like we're back, everyone. <laughs> we're still live. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Let's see here. Hey, there we go. So, yeah, oh, there we go. So, if you hold and touch this way, you can start to go back and forth. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, Alexi, they want to know what do you do to improve your form and speed? Okay, great question. Do some hill strides. Hill mm. strides. It's like a hill sprint. Um, that's the best. The best form you have yeah. is when you're running up a hill. So, if you have like a 10 second hill, go out and do five to eight of those strides at the end of maybe every other run. I don't even do that many. We do hill strides like once or twice a week. Okay. But if you really feel like your form is struggling, then the more you can incorporate that, the better. Yeah, that like intensity is so helpful. And with a lot of runners who are new, they tend to get stuck in the same routine. They're not yeah. necessarily in a specific program yet. So they tend to just kind of run. Yeah. And jog, and they just feel like stuck. And you can all also the time. do runners. I want to show them. Oh, let's show. Let's show some runners. Okay, wait. Just stay there. I mean, you should have to come over here. But you can take. Oh, we're pulling out the dumbbells. Well, I'm just gonna show you. So, like, hill strides help, and then you can stand in front of a mirror, and if you have good posture and you practice your running arms, these are ten pound weights. See, my body is still like swinging. Mm. I'm trying to keep my core stable and like keep my tummy yeah. tucked like i'm not great at these you don't need to use 10 pound weights use like fives you know can i try a few i feel like yeah. i tried a few yeah oh, yeah here we go it's my oh, in -house it's nice. <laughs> yeah seriously so just keeping these at a 90 degree angle and not trying to rotate well so you want to be almost like you're the windmill so your body is still yeah. your arms are like really Propelling, and then when you put them down, your arms will feel very light. Oh yeah, that's like that test where you like put your hands in the doorway and then they float up a little bit. <laughs> oh yes, this is really magic we're teaching. You. <laughs> um, 
What? Well, there was a question on my Instagram. Yeah, we got. We're really going back and forth. Yeah, let's get the Instagram um, question. Somebody asked how many miles a week I ran in high school, and mm. this is like a topic I'm very passionate about. I ran like twenty five miles a week at the most in high school, never more, and I ran thirty miles a week my freshman year of college, forty my sophomore year of college, fifty my junior year of college, and sixty miles a week my senior year of college, and seventy miles a week my my when I went to Oregon for fifth year. So like I just really want to emphasize that you don't have to run so many miles in high school uh, and it might be better not to. Yeah. That is really interesting. Was that just, you were lucky to have a coach that dictated that and that's just where it was? Or did you feel that pressure to do more, right? Because with so many of us, we see people running more and we feel like to be better, we have to run at the same miles that they're running. I think I was coming up during a time before social media, mm. so I simply didn't know what anyone else was doing. Uh, I played other sports too, mm. so I was probably running more than 20 or 25 miles a week, but I was doing it in the form of soccer and more dynamic movement, and I think that that has helped me be more athletic mm -hmm. and durable. So it's I know there's a lot of pressure and a lot of material out there that might make you feel like running more, but I, I think that it's, it's like much better to be able to run five more miles and not do it than to do it. Yeah, that's that great. I love it. Alexi, someone wants to know some solid tips for getting back into running after a long time away. Oh, long break. I had a long time away. <laughs> I took a really, really long break after Rio, and it was it was a really big learning curve for me because mm. I'd never taken a break that long before. And what I learned was that the most important thing was to become an athlete again before I was a runner. Mm. So that means instead of going from like not doing much to running, I needed to go from not doing much to being able to jump and move sideways and change levels. So I was doing maybe like three or four miles a day and then the equivalent, maybe 30 or 40 minutes of dynamic things. And I made them up. I did like ladders and jumping and that uh, helped me come back as a durable athlete. That's really good. I love that athletic base and that emphasis of it. And uh, body weight movements, it can be in a gym. It doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, is uh, so great. And if you have the 50th anniversary of the Runner's World cover, I feel like you're doing some fitnessy thing, maybe in the 80s cover. Yeah, I think so. I think mm -hmm. they're a Walkman. Too. So just find that vintage 80s gear and the Walkman and get your fitness on. That's so good. Um, what else we got? Oh, actually, how much time have we been on? 13 minutes. All right, 13 minutes, guys. We have two more minutes <laughs> of Alexi's time. And then I melt. And then <laughs> she turned into a witch. <laughs> We've had a couple questions about shin splints. Oh, okay. So, chin splints, unless you want to jump in. Please. Chin splints is, is, uh, is, it's not an injury. You're fine. Like, you're mm. not injured. But I think it, it indicates some over, over, um, some fatigue in your legs that mm. can be supported by, I think, these dynamic movements. Like, does yeah, that make sense? it does. Or like I, you can't, I I've think, had it before. But. I think there, in my experience, I think runners have different levels of awareness. And some, like when you're tuned in, you catch those like early little pings. It's just like, oh, I've got that little niggle or tight spot outside my shin. Uh, some people who are new, they don't know what those are, and then they let it go so far to all of a sudden they're like limping every time they go out. So I think the question would be like, where is that on the spectrum? And the earlier you can catch that stuff, I imagine the better. Yeah, and strengthen your feet, strengthen everything else. Like it's not, usually an injury is not 
the area that hurts is usually not the area that necessarily mm-hmm. needs the work. Mm-hmm. So perhaps you're uh, you're collapsing in, and so there's a lot of pressure on your shins. But the reason why you're collapsing in is because your hips are so weak, or you uh, you know your arches are collapsing or something. So I would think bigger picture and where else are you not supporting those shins rather than blaming the shins themselves. Shins had nothing to do with it. <laughs> They're just a victim. <laughs> They're just a victim. Be kind to those shins. Yeah. Well, yeah. is that, well, Alexi, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. It's so fun, guys. I'm so excited for you guys to see these videos with Alexi. They'll be coming out in the next month or so. Uh, we're going to be showing you a whole lot of mammoth. It is beautiful. So we're excited. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Thank and you. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, Paige, let's go get some dinner. Yeah. I'm kind of hungry. Mm. <laughs>